All right. So this might be easier to follow than just that stream of random positions. We'll see which, in fact, is easier to follow. Um, now, for some reason, I can't. I continue to imagine that this opening is somehow playable. Is it not playable? Is this just like fundamentally flawed or a bad idea somehow? I don't understand. Maybe this is supposed to just lose a pawn, and I've been misplaying the opening the entire time. Um, let's go back. Or maybe it is playable, just not recommended. Let's pin the knight. So their bishop is trapped back here, behind this pawn. Um... Oh, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, okay, if I'm going to protect my center pawn, I can't move my queen. I'm protecting my center pawn, and it doesn't matter. This is delightful. Um, oops, I was going to just hang my bishop over here on g5. This is probably a better way to let some of my pieces start dropping. Um, okay, we'll retreat, continue to attack this pawn, as if somehow that matters. I guess my knight could go advance to, like, here or something. Um, here, let's give my king some freedom to run away when the invaders attack. This knight has to retreat now, or take my bishop. Um, actually, that just wins a piece. Oops. Alright, whatever. Um, okay. Guess we'll take the pawn. Pretend this is part of the master plan. We just have to have a good imagination. Hmm. Maybe we should go back to playing tactics. At least those we have a chance to win. Uh, but yeah, my knight going to c7 would hit this rook in the corner. So, let's get the knight moving. Pretend that we have a plan. And see if we can actually threaten something before the game ends. That's the idea. If the queen takes pawn, I might just advance the rook to the center. And then play knight c7, threatening to hit the rook, threatening to hit this, which threatens this. Maybe. Um, well, our king's attacked. Wait, our queen is attacked, rather. Let's get the queen out of harm. Allow this queen fork. Guess we'll exchange queens. Because, you know, exchanging queens when you're losing is a good idea. Because it hastens your demise. Um, yeah, so we're going to stop this bishop from going anywhere useful. And then try to make threats with our knight. Because this is speed chess. And in speed chess, the knight is the most scary piece ever. It's capable of making threats every time it moves. Unless it's, like, nowhere near any of the other pieces. Alright, they're just going to move in on my king. We're going to pretend this is okay. I have to keep this pawn back here to stop their bishop from invading. Alright, well, whatever. We're hitting your bishop. What's your move? All right. Um, guess I'm going to protect my knight this way. Oh, well, that's a good move. All right, guess I'm protecting my rook. Oh. 
Okay. Huh. Well, guess I'm not winning a pawn because that would lose the game. Just kidding. Um, I'm threatening to take the pawn if they just ignore... Okay, yeah, they, they were paying attention. Nicely played. Uh, let's find ourselves a new opponent. Alright. Let's play c5. We've exchanged uh, uh, the queen's bishop pawn for the queen pawn. And now we can assert dominance. Starting with taking their queen. Nice. We beat a 2100, guys. In four moves. Alright, let's go to the analysis board and take a look. Alright, computer. What do you think of this game? Uh, computer thinks that this game is pretty even until this move got played. And then black is quite a bit better. Um, I think I agree. All right. let's, let's play another game. Yeah, I think perhaps opponents are not accustomed to players opening with this pawn. So maybe we should open with that this year. Make that the pawn of the year. Okay, who is this opponent? Who is this opponent who actually knows opening theory? And why? Why do they know the theory? They favor complicated positions as we do. Uh, let's claim this part of the center. So this is weak and difficult to defend. Um, we'll bring our bishop out onto this super long diagonal. And... Maybe I messed up. Almost certainly I messed up. Well, that's not great. But at least it's a complicated position. Um, guess we'll bring the rook over here to try to hit this pawn or just attack as many squares as we can. Uh, I guess pushing this edge pawn in this might be reasonable. Don't have anything better to do at the moment. Wait. What? Bro. Okay. Free pawn. Gotta take our free pawn while we can. Um... Yeah, sure, why not? Alright, our bishops slice through the board. This is beautiful. Next we'll play bishop d4 to stifle this bishop. Um, yeah, this is going very nicely since we have complete domination of the e-file they've lost their center pawn our d pawn commands quite a bit of space as well um yeah this is going great so let's uh exchange these bishops give our queen control of the all the dark squares um and then we can bring our other rook out now that the queen's no longer blo uh, bothering either of the rooks here. So just control all the squares and then punish uh, once we're ready to move forward. And I think we are. I think the next move is this pawn, allowing the bishop to hit this here. Now that we've put all our pieces on active squares. Um, 
Hmm. What's this? Well, my bishop's not so great here. There is a better square for my bishop. Let's take it. And then my knight's going to relocate right in front of the pawn. And things will be great. Yep. All right. And I can relocate to here or here next. Okay, what? So... Yeah, I'll just hit the rook and the queen. Also hitting this here, so if the queen goes too far, we just checkmate in one. I'm expecting rook takes knight. Um, yeah, that's fine. And we scare the knight away. And they try to make a threat with their knight somehow. Yeah, I thought so. Let me take this. Oh, shit. Well, I got lucky. I got so lucky that this knight check does not win my queen, because their queen is also attacked. That's not smart. Let's protect stuff so we don't have to worry about that again. Oh, sure, yes, we can certainly play a game. Sorry, I don't remember how long you how long ago you asked. Um, but yeah, let me see if I can find your count. How long a game do you want to play? Um, oh, at the start of this one, okay. Yeah, three, two? All right. Yeah, let's do it. Um... Hmm. Would you prefer I use this set or a real set? This is kind of like a handicap sort of thing I'm doing here. I should probably use a real set, right? Um... Oh, there's another check. Yeah, I'll probably use a real set for our game. It'll be a good game. This opponent finds all the tactics. Um, except this one. That's a check. And now my queen covers all the squares. There we go. Yeah, this one is a bit silly. It can be fun, but it is a bit silly. It's so cute, though. I just need to know when there's going to be a penguin set. I wonder. Yeah, the rook faces are pretty funny. The rooks are always considering or suspecting something, like you say. Feels like, like it's an incomplete face in some way. Um... All right, let's just take all the pawns. Oh no, my rook. Oh no, if he takes my rook, how's it going to end? 
I just don't know. All right, he's not taking the rook. <laughs> and I could simplify my game. I guess we'll just take this pawn and then go back. Oh no, my rook is hanging. Oh no. Wouldn't it be a travesty? All right, good game. Uh, let's change our background back to dark. Change our board theme back to I forget what. And change our uh, piece set to uh, C. Burnet. Yeah. Uh, board theme. I think this is the one I usually use. If we get into it and it ends up being strange, we can change that. But, uh, okay. Let's see. Yeah, there should be one. That'd be so cute. 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2. Not crazy house. <laughs> Not two second. There we go. Three minutes, two second. Since we're doing like an online streamer thing, whatever. We'll just make it unrated for the heck of it. All right. Uh, good luck. Got my water. All right. Yeah, let me take a look. There's a different board I usually use. Board theme. This one? No. Which one was it that I've used in the past? This one? No. No. Maybe. It's too bright. Uh, huh. this one, yeah, that's pretty typical. Uh, I guess we'll use a darker board for now. Uh, background, dark board. It's too dark. We'll just stick with this. Yep. All right, good luck. Have fun. Zen mode, here we go. The treacherous opening, to be sure. Yeah, not a bad move. Huh. Interesting. I feel like I'm going to learn something this game. I'm not sure what yet, but it seems like I've probably messed up already. That's my target. Oh, jeez, really? Um... Okay. It's probably fine, but this just caught me off guard a bit. Alright, so that's the plan. Yeah, I think this is simply better for me, despite my bishop being somewhat awkward here. Well, somewhat. It's not that great, actually. The bishop, that is. Um, my pawn can't advance. I guess we'll just try to make use of the rest of the pieces. Huh. 
Huh. Interesting. I was a bit constrained for space. I'm not so constrained at the moment. Yeah, I didn't think that would happen. I think it's still fine. Uh huh. I'm playing too quickly. It's still fine, but I've missed some opportunities. I've been too ambitious here, I think. Oh. Uh huh. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Guess we need to take some space this way. This is so strange. I've missed some key idea, and I'm not even sure where I've missed it. But my rook on a1 can't be right. The rest of my pieces could be fine, but the a1 rook just looks particularly strange here. That was a good night move. Oh, it's a better night move than I thought. Or is it? Time will tell, that's for sure. It's a hard position to hold in time trouble. Um, could be tenable. It's just really difficult. Oh, goodness. Huh. Maybe this is easier than I imagined. Uh, oh. Um... Maybe I've been greedy. I mean, there's a difference between making every tempo count and um, just 
being able to accept what's reasonable. Uh... Let's try this. Good game. All right, that was tricky. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, I have a chess tournament I'm supposed to be participating in. I guess we're going to do that next. Sorry, I'd forgotten about that. Um, so yeah, after this game, we'll get on way uh, participating in the tournament. Uh, actually, I need to check, goodness, if my game has started, if I'm in the middle of a game. Let me check. I don't think I am. But in case I have accidentally started a game, I need to get under way playing it. No. Nope. All right. We're fine. Yeah, it's just a team battle. It's not a Swiss. If it were a Swiss, I would have had to start my game already. So we'll get to witness me playing in a uh, team event. Uh, between three teams. Been looking forward to this for a few weeks. Uh, just forgot that it was happening tonight and not some other night. Alright, I guess we have to exchange bishops to get to the king um, out of here. Or at least have to offer a bishop exchange so that I can castle or otherwise get my king moved. Um, yeah, this position is pretty awkward. All right, we're going to exchange bishops and castle. And then eventually somehow this bishop on c8 might someday see the light of day. Probably not. All right, uh, let's prevent this from completely crushing us. Hmm. I don't know why, but Rook takes feels correct here. Um, so next on the agenda is hitting this pawn and removing it so that my bishop can move someday. Next, we got to remove the knight. Again, for the same reason. Unless somehow my rook and knight can team up on this pawn and forcibly remove it. Uh, okay, the pawn's defended. This is going to be very difficult. On the other hand, my position can't get any worse, so... Try to just gradually make it better. Um. 
fine. Let's see what your plan is. You have to be somewhat crafty to escape this kind of mess. <laughs> uh, okay. This is the target. You got the target secured. All right. Um, force the king away, and then try to do something useful. Um, Can rout the knight. Uh, I guess we'll take a. No, let's not. I could take the pawn. It's not worth it. Good game, well played. Uh, thanks for the games. And we're going to go play our tournament now. Um, although, uh, yeah, there's two hours left in this. I don't know how many games I'm going to end up playing. There's a lot of really strong tournament players in this event. Play as many games as you can. Uh, start within two and a half hours. Hit pause to take a break, etc. if you desire. Yeah. Uh, Berserk is not allowed in this tournament. And it's just a fun event to allow everybody to participate who wants to participate. Um, it seems uh, among my... Wait. What's the composition of my team here? Who is on my team tonight? Okay, wow. Well... Well, this will be a battle for the ages. Uh, huh. All right. Uh, oh, there's no wishing the opponent good luck, etc. from the buttons there. Let's just play our best game. Yeah, time pressure does that to a lot of players. But, uh, sorry that did happen. 
So yeah, now I'm playing in my chess club's uh, team battle. And it's going to be quite extreme because apparently of all the folks in my chess club, I guess I'm the highest rated player to have made it into this battle here tonight. Um, all right, we're going to play the old Benoni, unless they take Ampassant, and then we can take back. Um, I'm not really an expert in the old Benoni. Perhaps pushing it one square instead of two might have been smarter. I'm always pushing the limits of what my position can support. But, um, yeah, I think this position's decent. I don't really understand. That's a trap. Don't take the pawn, because there's this queen check that just picks up the knight. I almost fell right into that. And then I had a little bit of impulse control. Um... All right. I guess we'll move the knight out this way because this pawn controls the square. Um, since, since this square is controlled, we'll move the knight out the other way. Uh, this also deals with the queen check threat because it's not check anymore. Um. <sighs> if I could calm down and figure out like where the heck do my pieces belong here, that would be fantastic. I'm not really sure where my pieces belong in this opening. Um. I guess we'll play this up. I'm debating, do I push this two squares and drop the knight behind it? Or am I going to do something else? But yeah, we have a long, closed fight ahead of us here. Um, yeah, Bishop isn't very good where it's at. Yeah, let's push this. I think it's okay to push. And yeah, the idea is either the bishop will end up here or it ends up here. In either event, the knight is aiming to redeploy here. This pawn on g5 prevents knight h4 to knight f5. Um, but later on, yeah, if my knight can relocate, it can end up on f4. I'm not so sure why they're expanding. They have a very flexible shape. Oh! <laughs> okay, there are complications already. Gotta protect my pawn. Can't just move the bishop to defend my king. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. There might be a faster way I can attack here. Since this is just an online tournament thing, I'm kind of having fun with it. But yeah, this looks very much like uh, I've got an attack all of a sudden. Oops, this is my target square. I control this, I control that. Yeah, my king is pretty awkward and clumsy, but... Uh, I've got pressure. I wonder if I could play bishop g7 and castle and do all this stuff 
and not worry about immediately taking the pawn. But I suspect their next move is knight d2 to protect this. And once this pawn's protected, it's not easy to win. Um, but since my knight's on c5, well, I can't do that either, because this knight protects uh, g4 square. Yes, I don't really have an attack here. Oh no. My opponent has lost their connection. And while it is true that in two minutes after they've lost their connection in a half hour game, really it's only two minutes? But okay, if they lose their connection, I could claim vac victory after two minutes. That's. yeah. It's not an intentional disconnection at all. Huh. All right, so I think I just need to focus on not losing my king. I'm still surprised that in a half-hour-long game, an opponent who loses their connection for two minutes just instantly forfeits. I think on Lee Shogi, isn't it like five minutes? Although, in that case, Lee Shogi automatically claims the win for you. But still. That's kind of crazy. I guess shogi games do run a bit slower or longer than chess games in general. Um, hmm. uh, so I want to continue delaying castling if it can afford me any advantage to keep uh, if staying flexible gives me any advantage, I want to maintain my flexibility and not castle right away. Um, so we could play this before castling. This could indicate a queen side castle instead of a king side castle. But yeah, I kind of miss us, uh, our chess club going out to other clubs. We would go travel half hour to an hour in any given direction and play matches against um, uh, the club at the club site. Uh, the one thing I don't exactly miss about that is the fact that these chess games could run super late into the night. Um, it was just exhausting doing the matches and then having uh, work the next morning. Um, it was great being with friends and having the camaraderie and working together for a common objective and all that stuff, but the actual playing of games that would go forever into the night and then looking at your teammates' game and seeing, okay, it looks like they're going to win, so maybe I should try to just draw my game and not worry about winning it. Um, maybe I don't need to push too hard and risk losing, and something like that. That's a good team-building exercise. But, um... That said, uh, like, most of my games ended up being extremely sharp. Okay, what's my opponent's rating? 2375. Okay, yeah. This is why I'm getting clonked. Um, it's for two reasons. One, because um, they're a very good player. Two, because I am not in top shape at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to enjoy playing games. 
And I think they have a far, far greater interest in winning than in just playing. Um, I'm just not finding the this situation super serious. That said, like I'm playing as the top board of my club tonight, so I should try to play my best. Um, but yeah, my best tonight's not so great. All right, so this pawn is pinned to the bishop. It cannot take this way because of this pin. So I can't put my knight out here. So if my knight's to be useful, it needs to go there. Um, or the opponent's just going to ignore my knight, because they can just ignore it. Um, that's a, this pawn here looked as if it were hanging, but my opponent didn't take it, so maybe it was not actually hanging. I mean, the knight kind of has to go here. A knight's no good on c5. I can move my other knight to c5. Uh, all my pieces are competing for this square. Like, even this knight was competing for it. So, this is my focal point. Um, my bishop on g7 is pretty sad. And wishes it had something else to do. I don't really want to take the bishop on c1. I just have no plan at all here. Other than don't give away stuff for free. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to use my bishop. I'm trying to use my other bishop. And this position is just depressing. My opponent has thoroughly outplayed me. Uh, if I could get my knight up to f4, that could be a useful thing. Except here, that would just hang the knight. Um, Jeez. Well. What do we even do? Try to activate the rook. I mean, what else is there? This way, if this bishop actually gets scared away someday by this, followed by that, it can run a retreat behind the pawn. What? Okay. So. I'm so confused. This protects the pawn that was already protected twice. This also threatens to try to checkmate my king. Awesome. So while I have no attack, they have a strong attack. And while I have no plan, I can see what their plan is. Uh, my bishop has no future. Need to give my bishop a future, but that puts my king at risk. So I guess we just try to activate the rooks. Even if I can't activate the bishop, um, I could try to. Oh, okay. Jeez, this is not good. Um. Thought I had a plan. I still kind of have one. Um, so this exposes my plan to force a rook exchange. Um, I'm not even sure the plan works, but it's better to have a plan than no plan. Right, and so I can take this now to, to attempt to stir up something. I don't even know what, but... Um, okay. Now we have to retreat somewhere. I guess this is as good as... Oh my goodness. I'm not thinking clearly at all. 
in case that isn't extremely obvious. Yeah, this just wins my pawn in a position that I'd much rather not defend. Um, so, yeah. I considered queen c7, but then like rook e c1 and bishop b4 strikes anyway. There's really no point in pretending to be able to defend this. Um, I'm just thoroughly outplayed here. Completely outclassed. And yeah, none of my pieces can move anywhere. Maybe we play one more game after this. But are they going to play bishop b4? Yeah, let's just concede this. Well played. Very nicely played. Thanks for the game. So this is an arena team battle. This is not Swiss. Um, so you're not forced to wait forever for the next game. Let's see, what is this? Uh, fetching a cup of coffee and returned before seven and is forfeited. This seems unfair. Most likely I should a better format or find a better format. Yeah, I guess so. I suppose that could be the case. That maybe this is not an ideal format. Alright, good luck. Let's play a queen pawn opening and try not to embarrass ourselves too badly this time. Alright, um, sure. Okay, how does this go again? We take this one. And uh, we take this one. And I don't remember how any of this goes. Something like that. Maybe it was knight c3 and not knight f3. That was just too much. At some point you play e4 and put the king on g2. Are they going to play queen d7? No, we're just going to transpose back into a standard uh, Benko gambit. They do know this, right? They know bishop takes bishop. Yeah, king takes bishop. Castle, king g2. <sighs> Chances are they know this twice as well as I do. Because, like, every club playing player knows this stuff. And I just pretend to. Uh, what am I supposed to play here? There is a move. <sighs> what the hell is going on? Is it knight d2? And then now... It's so a bishop g5. That doesn't seem right. I've played knight d2 before here, and it's, it's been super painful. Um, played bishop g5, and that's no good. So, could it be rookie one? Could rookie one possibly be the reasonable play here? Now about pawn e5. Pawn e5, if nothing else, has the merit of being original. 
but it seems to drop everything immediately. Yeah, it's got to be rookie one. But then they're going to play like knight b6 or queen c7 or queen b6 and rook b8 and heck if I know. It's also that. Maybe it was h3 to stop this from happening. And it's too late now. But once they play knight e5, I could play f4. Is this so bad after f4? Wait, why don't I just play knight f1? Knight f1 is almost certainly original. But it doesn't seem bad. This way I have control of this square. And my knight's not vulnerable like it would be on other squares. I can still play this. Hmm. Interesting. So if I play f4, they don't get to play knight d3. They could play knight c4. They could play knight e3 to scare or trade for that knight. Um, I could play bishop g5. But then they play rook b8. Um, this is tricky. So this is that's not how a knight moves this is how a knight moves it's how a bishop moves what am i supposed to play is it h4 just saying forget everything we're gonna go attack on the king's side No, because they could always play knight f8, and there's never a checkmate. So f4 looks like the most fun or interesting thing to do here. Um, hmm. Then this knight moves. It's got to be bishop g5. Just given what a wreck this position is to begin with, this looks like the only sensible play here. And that's saying something. So I'm hoping f6 happens. Realistically, this move never happens here. But this is the target. Somehow they either need to deal with or completely ignore this target. Um, and we'll see what they come up with. Pawn h6 might be right. Well, no, pawn h6 I just take, and then I'm threatening d6 also, in addition to just taking the rook. So the most concerning move here is rook b8. Yeah, no, this is just silly. You don't want to block your bishop, not if you can help it. Uh, we'll go back. Right, so they've blocked their bishop. This gives me Tempe to do nothing, really. I'm hallucinating if I think a tempo is going to help me in any constructive way here. Oh, well, there's one. I could play h4. Screw it. Why not, right? 
Give them something to think about. If they play h5, this weakens their king. If they allow me to play h5, this weakens their king. But yeah, this position is just unpleasant for me. All right, h5 has been played. Um, I guess knight e3 and then g4 is my big plan. Uh, let's let's execute on it. So this sort of stuff could be in the works. Um, absent anything else to do. I guess knight e2 to knight f4 to knight e6 could be played. Um, strange. Right, they threaten knight d3. Um, Well, I guess we're just going to play queen c2. Just laugh it off. Let them take our bishop. Hope that we survive whatever attack is coming. Oh, but their other knight can go to e5 and d3 next. That's a bit annoying. Uh, very troublesome. Um, Alright, so... Moved the rook to safety. Could not seem could not say the same for the bishop. Bishop could not have been moved to safety in time. Uh, that said, are they really going to take this bishop, or are they just going to play this up and then take the bishop and then fork my queen and pawn and take my pawn and take all my other stuff? Oh, oh, that's resourceful. That is super resourceful. Huh. Well, I'm screwed. I'm so screwed. All right, I guess we're playing 92 to F4 and all that stuff now. It's never going to amount to anything, but if it does, that would be great. Uh, can't imagine this going well. But hey, we got knight d4, we got an f4, we can go to e6 two different ways. We're attacking this, so like, stuff is attacked. We could maybe do something. I just can't imagine it ending well, but the journey could be interesting. If they take on c1, I guess we do rook f takes, because who needs to defend our king anyway? Defending this pawn is worth more than defending the one right next to our king, I think. But yeah, we got targets. It's just... Shame that those targets are not valuable. If I had a tempo, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, I don't think I'm going to get my tempo, but if I had a tempo. Could just stick the bishop on c3 
and half my problems would be solved by introducing another set of problems. Um, but yeah, queen takes, hitting the queen, hitting the knight uh, has some interest. Because this queen and rook pair apply tons of pressure on the queen side, so because of this, they kind of have to take here. Or come up with a way to defend this pawn and add pressure on my queen side. Yeah, so they're just going to take here like I expect. Um, I don't feel like giving away the A pawn just yet, so let's put our rook from the king's side over here. We still have this idea. We still have this idea. Um, I'm a bit confused. Okay, what? They have blocked their bishop. I'm going to need a minute to process that. Um... So this C pawn is forever hanging. I mean, I could take it right now. And then they... Now they've just bungled this. No, there's just no... I cannot think of a way to explain what they just did. They're down one pawn. They're losing another. I don't see any justification for this. Unless, like, somehow I've missed some tactic that just levels everything. It seems like I've gotten away with quite a bit here. Um, maybe they really wanted this endgame. To me, that doesn't make sense. And I guess the idea is that you could draw this endgame at will. Um, and maybe that's why they were aiming for it. It's because they're content with the draw. Uh, who knows? Um, if I check King F7, 96, I have something of an attack here. Do I play 96 first or do I check first? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And we have to check first so the king cannot use the g7 square. So now with the king on this square, we could play knight to e6. Um, and this gives their king access to g7. Were they aiming for a draw? I don't know. 1643? They might have been aiming for a draw. It's okay. Am I okay with the draw? Don't see me complaining too much. Um, let's go back. Are they trying to win this, maybe? That would be ambitious. Presumptuous, even. I guess they could push this pawn. Alright, check. King e8, check. Their king cannot escape my knight and rook. So I should be content with a draw because I can't win this. Um, so because I should be content with a draw, and because this tends to repeat the position unless they play king h7, I should play this to induce king h7. 
Um, if the king goes back toward the center, it's too risky for the king here. So I'm going to see if they're willing to play king f7 and just repeat. And if so, we'll just call it a draw here. Yeah, good game. Well played. All right. Um, hmm. We'll take a break and take a look at somebody else's game here. Uh, how's our team doing? Oh my goodness. Thank goodness that somebody on my team can win a game. Because I sure can't. Um, so, yeah, let's watch this one. Uh, question marks just mean that on this website, players don't have an established rating. Uh, I happen to know that the black player here has a positive record against me. So, for whatever reason, um, they're just, their online rating doesn't reflect that yet. Um, I think after some games in this tournament, their online record will reflect that. Um... I'm not sure. Chess is hard. Why do people play it? It's a good team activity to go to a site with some friends, see how you and your teammates can perform and cooperate, not in terms of helping each other in games, but looking at each other's games, trying to figure out um, whether it's acceptable to draw or whether your team expects you to try to win. Um, uh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, chess is hard. At the time control of a half hour per player per game, there's just... It's a thinking game. It's hard to commentate. Um, I guess if my opponent, or if my teammate's playing a game, we could observe it. They are playing a game. Can I somehow navigate to that board? Yes, it's here somewhere. Here it is. Let's take a look. So, wow. Uh, we have a King's Indian attack and a King's Indian defense. Um, that's tremendously complicated. Yeah. In that final position in my game, the only reason I favored a draw is because I was losing. And I would be embarrassed to lose two games in a row. Um, I don't know. It's perhaps not a healthy attitude, but I really wanted that game to end. Oh, welcome. Goodness. Welcome. We've got quite a few... Uh, I, yeah. Uh, would we prefer that instead of me commentating a game here, I could spec or play one? Um, I have been playing a couple games in this tournament. Uh, my chess team and uh, two other teams had decided to engage in a team battle here. It's perhaps better since there's so many people that I just try to commentate a game instead of actually playing one. But yeah, welcome everyone. So, yeah, this is uh, the Argonne National uh, Laboratory uh, versus our local chess club versus the Nokia chess club. So we got three clubs in the area that we've not been able to meet in person to hold our matches, but we thought it would be fun to play some games online. Um, I don't know like what everybody's skill level ranges are, um, but, yeah, if you want, we could try to, uh, explain what's going on in this game. Um, a number of people here, I think, are also here from Shogi. And in Shogi, there's this proverb that, like, you want these pawns in tension. If you have so many pawns threatening each other, um, that makes you a strong player. Um... And chess, uh, it's pawn tension is really exciting to watch. Because, uh, like, this could happen, and if this happens, then stuff could attack on this line. And 
uh, if this exchanges, the ship could get open. And but if black exchanges pawns willy nilly, white ends up controlling a lot of space here. So that's a trade off. Yeah, it's a great stream title. I was actually quite stunned to see so many people interested in the game. Um, but yeah, I've been playing the game uh, ever since I invented it. Uh, that's the story I keep going with. People ask me my age, and I just tell them, you know, I invented chess. So uh, in terms of internet years, that's probably right. Um, yeah, it's a good stream title when I'm feeling especially creative. Earlier today, I was featuring the latest uh, Lee Chess set that they had to offer. Um, but now we're back to the standard C Burn It set. Um, also got this cool neon user style thing. If you go... <laughs> I would say if you go to my GitHub user style page, you could actually find the source for it. I'd link to the other source for it, but it's down at the moment. Yeah, there's a horsey uh, set where all the pieces look a little bit childish. Um, yeah. Wow. Goodness. We've got more viewers than we know what to do with. I guess what that means is that I have to actually play a game. Alright, let's rejoin the team battle. Uh, wait for a pairing. And meanwhile, spectate this game over here, where the knight's threatening to check the king and the rook. Um, they should make a Debotsu chess set. Yeah, Debotsu, for those who aren't familiar, that's the animal shogi uh, popularized by uh, women's professional or ladies' professional shogi player uh, Madoka. Uh, I apologize for forgetting her other name. Um, but yeah, she introduced a... Uh, set of shogi pieces that have all these cute animals on it that really appeals to children. Uh, yeah, Madoka Kitao. I apologize. Yeah. Um, so the idea is you could show this thing. It's got this beautiful sky-colored board with uh, grassy hills or whatever on it. And your objective is to capture the opponent's lion. And so you have a giraffe, and you've got... I don't remember what the other pieces are. Uh, yeah, probably. I very much suspect that it's the case that, um, uh, if I remember right, uh, so those who are in the know have heard uh, Ladies Professional Shogi Harbor. All right, here we go. We're going to go for it. Play King's Pawn opening. It's going to be glorious. All right, we're playing the crazy stuff. They're just going to play d5. Whatever. Um, but yeah, Shogi Harbor, uh, years ago, had been invited to visit Japan um, based on um, just having participated in some online Shogi and having performed decently and well online. Um and expressed some interest in, you know, oh, someday I might be interested in trying to be a pro player, and immediately um, it was suggested, oh, come to visit Japan. Come see us. We'll see what we can arrange. <laughs> uh, just in terms of, like, uh, introducing to the culture and um, so a club and who knows what else. Um, yeah. Honestly... Uh, you say consider switching to Shogi. Hmm. You know, even though, like, I'm participating in this chess team battle thing here tonight, I, even though, like, realistically, my chances, uh, well, it's not possible for me to become a pro Shogi player in Japan. It's almost impossible that outside of Japan I could do it. Um, but my chances of becoming a pro chess player are about not quite as dismal, but still pretty bad. It's not the greatest investment of my time to do chess when Shogi... Like, 
everybody clamors on this site for please introduce bug house and i think it's just because people have not discovered what shogi is yeah yeah i appreciate the offer um i just don't want to take advantage of all the folks who came here for chess but yeah yeah shogi is really cool it's like bug house there's lots of combinations and tactics and ideas and even if you're in a worse position you can still have some winning chances Whereas, like, here, you'll just see me tilt for the next hour, trying to win this game. So, in Shogi, you get to tilt for many hours, not just one. But no, you get to try to find a lot of cool ideas, and often there are ways to escape difficult positions. <laughs> if there's one thing we need to know, it's that you hate chess. Oh. Well, possibly it's just because you haven't discovered my delightful user styles. Like, I made one... I don't know if you've ever played the computer game VVV, VVV. Um, but there's a whole bunch of colorful space captains that go around traversing these sectors and collecting energy disks or something. And discovering all the captains that had somehow been teleported into strange locations. Anyway, I forget the story, but... Um, there, yeah, there's these really cute, colorful 8-bit avatar things, and I made a chess set that just uses all these colored 8-bit avatars, and when it's the opponent's piece, it's just flipped upside down. Uh, so, you're so tired, 3M. Yeah. Can I fault you? Maybe I should have stuck to commentating games. Uh, so I'm trying to apply pressure to my opponent's center before they finally successfully castle and just make my position look embarrassing. Um, if I play this pawn, what's going to happen? I don't know. Let's play the pawn forward, see what happens. I'm beyond the point of caring about this game. We're just going to have fun. What's my opponent's rating? 1874. Alright, yeah, we have some chance. If our opponent were rated like 2200, we'd be like, oh, well, that was the game. But my plan here is just to play pawn b5 and then win this pawn. This is not my smartest move ever, but at present... I am extremely impatient, so we're just going to roll with it um, and see what attacks we can discover. So this is my target. Um, well, really, everything's my target. All these pieces are, like, super loose. And I'm just counting on having... A more enjoyable, easier to maintain position. And being able to produce some kind of an attack from it. I'm not sure where my knight goes after here. I could also consider here, but I don't think I'm ever winning this pawn in the center. So we're just going to play the two pawn deficit. And pretend everything's fine. And then just slowly tilt our way down through the next hour. And watch it all grind down to nothing. And then wonder why it was, like... Yeah, I don't know. Chess is hard. How many people here study end games? If you've had close games, chances are they've ended in an end game. Yeah, see... If you're playing tournaments, and I don't know if you prefer tournaments or just having fun with the game outside of tournaments, but some people who actually play tournaments never bother to study end games. And that never made sense to me, because anytime I've got a close game, it typically ends in an end game. So, like, those are the things that I most have interest in learning in chess. Plus, there's some just 
really cool endgames that are possible. Alright, so... Yeah, my knight on e4 wouldn't do anything. But a knight on b3 is also not enough to win this pawn. This is a conundrum. So the knight on e4 would never attack a thing at all. Let's move it over here instead. Ah, you mostly study Morphe games. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um, yeah, I guess I do encourage studying Morphe or Capablanca or all that. That's all well and good. Um, yeah, I guess also... Uh, I know National Master Zog Addict John Chernoff has recommended studying games somewhat closer to your own level, too. Because looking at top Grandmaster games uh, can be kind of daunting. Uh, that said, like, uh, Paul Morphy games might be accessible just because uh, that early in chess theory development maybe it's easier to follow what's going on. Maybe. I'm not sure. Alright, this is loose. They're threatening this fork. I guess I probably need to defend against the fork. And yeah, probably I'm just gonna get hosed. But we'll do the best we can anyway. I guess this is the idea and try to hit this. Separately, I want to hit that. Separately, maybe this. <laughs> That's not going to be pretty. But yeah, if I move my bishop off of d3, we know that I've got one, two, three, and potentially a fourth attacker all striking this pawn. So it can't be that bad for me to strike at it. Um, again, I'm just trying to have fun here, so we're just going to play the obvious fun move. Rook f2 could have been worth considering. Um, I did spend a little time and then realized, well, my rook is super awkward here and really prone to attack. So it felt like rook e1 puts the rook on a half-open file, threatens, in some cases, rook takes knight which seems extremely unlikely, but could be threatened. Might even support a threat of just me taking on d4 and then later taking the knight. Um, but yeah, now I've got three pieces attacking on d4. And they can't move their knight away to g4 to somehow... I don't even know what. Their bishop on c8 can't immediately attack. Very likely their next move here is pawn a5. Um, and then I play pawn a4, and then they have to come up with another plan. Um, that said, maybe pawn a5, I could just move my bishop to e4. And if pawn a4, I just take on d4. Maybe that would be okay. Wait, no, bishop e4, knight c4 is a problem. So yeah, pawn a5, bishop b5 is the right response. So they're not going to do pawn a5 after all. Um, maybe queen c7. Threatening to take on f4. Yeah, that's pretty sad. Um, hmm. Queen c7, knight d4, knight d4, knight d4. Um, queen f4. I could, could take on e3, like queen takes, they do queen takes, rook takes e3. Um, yeah, and they cannot immediately win a piece by any tactic that I see. So what I'm looking at is this. We liquidate on d4. Uh... I take the knight on e3 to win a knight. Um, I just get away with winning a knight because rook d8 does not win the piece back because of c3. Otherwise, if not for pawn c3, 
this bishop and this rook would be applying pressure and a pin on this knight and bishop, then I don't know. Probably there's other reasons none of this works, but I guess the point is that queen c7 drops the d-pawn, so it's not the best move here. Knight f5 might be okay, but it drops the d-pawn. Like, everything drops the d-pawn, except maybe queen b6. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's confusing. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's the plan. Alright, so... Do I take on d4 anyway? Knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, knight on e3. Um... Hmm. I went a pawn back. This might be my best play. It's not inspiring. But it's not bad. I'm impatient. I don't see any other future for this knight. Let's just do it. All right, and then we take this knight here. And the idea is that this is going to be hanging at the end of the combination. This is going to hang. So we've sacrificed a knight to get the knight back, thus collecting a pawn. And now we have the joyous task of defending a pawn down endgame that we were very much looking forward to this entire game. So we could spend the next half an hour uh, looking at the merits of all the possibilities in this endgame. Or we just exchange queens and say YOLO and hope that it works, which seems more fun for an, uh, for the viewers. So we're just going to play it this way for the viewers. Get the king off the diagonal and try to get our pieces active. Bishop e4 might have been fine, but then rook d2 is a problem. Um, All right, let's play this to an open file. It's just an extremely difficult position to hold. And if I blow it, I just want to be because um, I wasn't trying. As opposed to losing this because I'm bad at chess. In this case, it'd be more fun to just lose it for not trying. I don't know why. I just don't feel like getting super invested in this endgame. Um, of course, I'll give it a reasonably good effort and do my best to produce counterplay, but this position looks extremely difficult because I can't push on the queen side. If I push on the queen side, I just lose my pawns. If I push on the king side, I lose my king. So I just have to hang tight. Which is not fun. So. We'll do the best we can. All circumstances considered here. So rook a3 is an idea. It's not going to go anywhere because all they have to do is protect this pawn. But. Um, I mean, what else can we do? Right, and the other idea here is that by playing this rook move, we provoke rook a4. And the rook's... well, it's actually going to win my pawn from a4, isn't it? So I need to play pawn a3 now, otherwise I lose a pawn. Um, pawn a3 is a decent move.
That's one fewer pawn on a light square. Just want to put all the pawns on dark squares and attempt to hold this extremely miserable endgame. Uh, maybe I could play rook c3 next. And then rook c7 someday. Um, but yeah, the more pawns that are on light squares, the harder it is for my bishop to move. Until my opponent finds a way to offer a bishop exchange, and then I don't have to worry about moving the bishop anymore. But if it looks like they're going to try to offer a bishop exchange, I'll come up with some way to activate my rook as part of some combination somehow. Or I'm just going to lose. Alright, so activating the rook was the goal. Rook c3 activates the rook. Rook c5 prevents that activation. Um... Okay, rook c3, rook c5, rook takes, pawn takes, rook e5, rook takes a3, rook takes c5. They have the outside passed pawn. That's no good. Um, hmm. Bishop e4, rook d2 check, I lose my bishop. Pawn c4, pawn c4, kind of limits the range of all their pieces. Um, hmm. Pawn c4 is not bad. It's awkward, but I don't see it being bad. No, c4 is an obvious target, though. They could play the rooks to c5 and a4 and then bring their bishop to hit this. But my king could come up to support it. Well, my position can't get any worse. And pawn c4 does make some kind of inroads. It just gets in the way of me activating the rook, though. If the goal is to activate the rook, rook c3 is the move. I'm not sure that that's the goal, though. Wait, after we exchange rooks here, I could play rook a1 and bring my king in to hit this rook, or pawn, on c5. Um, I still want all the rooks to be on the board. Wait, why do I want that? Because this endgame is otherwise quite miserable? No, because I'm playing to try to win it. What I should be trying to do is draw this. And to draw this, exchanging rooks helps. But then my bishop has no future. I, um, interesting position. Hmm, well, yep, here we go. Pawn moves cannot be undone. So we're hitting this. This rook on a4 temporarily is in a very strange spot. Temporarily, I've gotten control of quite a few squares. And I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, that is possible. And I can just defend this square. I thought they had more of a plan than this. But maybe this is enough. 
I just don't see it going too far. Um, let's defend this pawn and not in any way make any sneaky threat. Um, Now, seriously, this pressure on the A-file is unpleasant to deal with. So, the more awkward I can make this for my opponent, the better. Um, that said, rook c3 might be a huge blunder. Because if they play rook c5, I'm kind of making it easier for myself to be attacked. Yeah, this is not smart. It was cute. It was not smart. Um, maybe it's fine. I don't know. Let's use the king. If I were more patient, I would calculate a lot of stuff. But where I'm just calculating is if they push this, I can push my king. Okay, yes, they could push here. But it's probably fine if I take and then they take my rook and I take their rook. So like if all this happens, it's probably okay. At the very least, my pieces are becoming active. So, yeah, who wanted to see some Rook games today? Not me. <laughs> At least I'd have more fun spectating it than playing it. I'll put it that way. Um, but no, I think Rook games are really complicated and merit study. It's just, goodness, studying them takes a lot of energy and focus. It's kind of extraordinary that a piece that just moves vertically and horizontally, um, you would not think that that would be such a difficult thing to study. But, boy, these pieces can fly. Um, oh, crud. I forgot about that. Alright, well, that's a problem. That is so many problems all rolled into one. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to move the rook back. And try to stop this from happening. The more pieces I involve in pins, the worse this gets. So let's not pin all of my pieces. Um... Ultimately, I probably need to put my rooks on the D file, which is extremely hard to coordinate when I'm threatening to put my king on the D file and also threatening to have my C pawn pinned two different ways. So, yeah, probably next moves are going to be something like bishop E2, rook D1, rook B, D3, something like that. Also, rook b4 might be interesting, but only in the right circumstances. Of course, I'm tinkering with h4, but it doesn't do anything. The rook covers h5. That's never changing. And even if the opponent plays h5, like it's not as if they're threatening h4. Um, 
it's not even if I play h4 they forcing them to play h5 somehow it did that wouldn't achieve anything so yeah we're just gonna try to discourage pawn b5 and hope our opponent is content with the draw or otherwise hope that I don't know they run out of time or something I mean it's not an easy end game but there have been harder end games this is not the hardest possible end game um well sure let's offer a rook exchange this is going to provoke rook a5 if they actually do exchange rooks i will be stunned I mean, yes, they're up a pawn. Yes, this is give them the outside pawn for whatever that's worth. But um pretty sure the end game where this rook cannot go anywhere is drawn. Especially if I can exchange off all the queen side pawns and then at my leisure exchange the king side pawns. Pretty sure that doesn't go anywhere at all. So that's why I'm offering this exchange. Opponent declines the exchange. Um, fine. Uh, but yeah, the rooks doubled on the A file don't actually do anything here. Not unless they manage to move this pawn through their rook. And I don't see that happening. I mean, yeah, they could try to do something with their king and their bishop and pawns. But unless somehow they manage to break through, um, it's just nothing's going to happen there. Um, do I play h4 here? Like, it's either rook c3 or h4 are the only things really worth doing here. Um... Oh, sorry, bishop c2 could be interesting. But, no, let's let's play this so we don't have to worry about rook h5 ever ruining anything. And I'm not concerned about pawn b5. Like, it just doesn't do anything. Pawn b5, pawn c5, like, what's your point? You've managed to pin the... F okay, I can't count at all. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I just gave away a pawn because I can't count. Whatever. Um, makes the game more exciting for spectators. Sure. Let's just pretend we did that on purpose. Um, I promise I did try to count on like three different occasions. And even if I had counted correctly and moved my king up, like... They'd still find some way to exploit it. Bishop takes is probably still just as good. But, um, yeah. That was nicely exploited. So, this is pretty bad. It's not lost, but definitely it's trending toward lost. Um... I have no patience to think about this right now. I need to think. I just want to play this. This um, suggests a bishop exchange. Which probably will occur. I'm trying to activate my rook. And if my rook becomes active, I still have some drawing chances, despite being down two pawns. Um, alternatively, I could have tried to move the bishop away, and who knows where that would have ended up. I have ideas, but I don't know for sure. Um, if bishop takes, I could exchange rooks and then take the bishop. 
and fragment their pawns. They split up my pawns. It's a mess. That doesn't seem to get very far. His rook takes rook lost. Survey says almost certainly, but not entirely certainly. Yeah, no, I need to take here so I don't lose my A-pawn. Yeah, so this is forced. And the, I suspect they are forced to exchange rooks here. And we have a two-pawn down endgame. That looks unsavable. I'd say, yeah, my chances to save this... Um, reside entirely in the clock and its ability to try to force an error. And it seems extremely unlikely that I'll save this. So what I said about tilting for the next hour uh, seems to have come to fruition. Indeed. Um, oh, that is clever. Well spotted, sir. Um... Hmm. All right. Whatever. Let's pretend this is fine. It's not fine. So they just play king d6. And I don't have a move. Um. That's pretty great. The best I could do here is probably king e4. <sighs> this is dispiriting. Whatever. Let's play it. See if we can run them out of checks. See if we can give them some challenges to think about by protecting both of our pawns. I don't know how my king is ever going to make anything happen here, but we can dream. Also, pawn f5 is scary. But I guess the idea here is that if they do something ridiculous... Somehow my rook might become active and start attacking their pawns. I can't even imagine how they'd mess this up to the point where my rook becomes active, but in theory, stuff could happen. Um, Alright, our king will try to keep their king away from this pawn. Yeah, at least in Shogi, when you're down two pawns, you're down two silvers, or two golds, or who knows, you're down whatever number of pieces, you can still dream that someday things might be better. In chess, it's not so. Dreaming is not... Um, doesn't help that much. Alright, what do we do now? Well, we need to activate our rook, so let's do this. I've been holding off on doing that forever because it's a leads to a difficult position. But uh, we'll do it anyway. We've split their queenside pawns, which gives us some hope of counterplay. As long as I don't play this and walk into a, a king rook fork. So I need to like play the king over, play the rook up and over. And they're free to do whatever they want at this time. Um, so, we'll see if they come up with anything. If this ever becomes a trivial win, I'll just resign it. But it's still not trivial yet. I 
we still have some problems to figure out. Right, so we can put the king over. And the next idea is bring the rook over and up. So we'll see if that happens. Now this is super easily defended against by either the king or the rook protecting the seventh rank. But hey, it's an idea. Um, oh, right. That also protects against my idea. Um, so the next idea they have is bringing the king over. Well, that doesn't do anything just yet. Um, I mean, what do we do here? Rooks don't belong in this kind of circumstance. But this rook check fork is too strong. I can't just... Whatever. We're going to push the pawn and pray that it's okay. Either rook d3 wins or it doesn't. I'm gambling that this does not win. All right. Oh, well... This might make things easier for them. Yeah, so this... In trying to stop pawn a4, I've overcommitted. Um, well, no, their king can't go to b4, because I just take here. Um, but this is... Like, this pawn's indefensible. Um, I have stepped out of the fork but at the expense of the entire game being lost. So that's a thing. Um, I guess we'll pull back one and try to attack somehow. Again, this endgame is indefensible, etc., etc. There's nothing... I can do to try to save this. Uh, I'll still play it out as best as we can. But we're losing another two or three pawns here in the best possible circumstance. And the worst circumstance, we're probably getting mated, but. Um, Right, so they avoid my rook forking their king and a pawn. Um, oh, they're just going to play rook b3. And then I play rook d2, and they play rook d3, and I play rook b2, and they play rook b3, etc. But no, they're going to find some way to... Um, I don't know. But we need our rook to be active. So this activates the rook at the cost of all of my pawns. Also probably allows their king to help their pawn promote. Um, it's kind of a problem. So if they play king c3, if I play rook b5, they play rook d5. And I've got nothing. So on king c3, I have to play rook b7. Um, and pray. So. Yeah, this is one idea. This is another idea. Rook e3 is a third idea. Um, even pawn c3 might be playable here. It's just how bad our position is. All right. Uh, so they're threatening rook a2 on some future turn. Um, yeah, this position's hopeless. All of my pawns are dropping. Their c pawns promoting, their a pawns promoting. Good game. Well played. Nicely done. Yep. So let's take a look at some of the other games. How's my team doing? 
solid last place. And among my team, I am solidly in last place with a performance rating of 1631. All right. Um, yeah, it's about as many games as I feel like playing right now. This format encourages people to play as many games as they want. It's not like Swiss, um, but in this way, like you don't get paired against members of your own team. You just continuously play games against members of other teams. Um, but yeah, we're probably going to sign out here. Uh, you can check out this game. It's going to be going for a while. I don't foresee this one ending anytime soon. It looks really complicated. So, yeah. Um, hmm. I wonder what else is... Did that endgame make sense to everybody? That makes endgame make sense to anybody. Um, I hope it did. Yeah, I don't know when the next uh, team battle for our chess club and other chess clubs might occur. Um, unfortunately, our team captain couldn't make it tonight, so I guess I got to captain our team, I being our highest rated player participating in this, and I got a score of one. Uh, yeah, the Chicago Area Chess League, the Chicago Industrial Chess League, is extremely competitive um and yeah it's great fun for everyone but perhaps over the years i've taken it a bit too seriously um too competitively and just not focused on well this is just a fun occasion to go with friends and travel places see things um maybe dine a bit afterward yeah it's a good of uh, recreational thing but um, yeah there's some extremely strong players and it's amazing to see them at their best um, so I hope you all enjoyed this either way uh, yeah thanks for watching